Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. <sighs> My name is Yuri Pants. My name is Jason Newland. My website is letmeboreyou.com. That is my podcast website. The main website, or the podcast rather, the main podcast is hosted on SoundCloud. Uh, but it is also available on most of the main podcast hosts. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Vidi is under the table eating his dinner. He's so lazy. So lazy. I put his dinner in a bowl next to his water, which is under the television. It's not under. <laughs> okay, I should explain this. Because like, how is he supposed to get to it if it's under the television? No, it's not actually under the... T the television's not leaning on it, not laying on the bowl. That would be weird. It's, um... There is a... I suppose this probably sounds even weirder. There's a, a wardrobe turned on its side. <laughs> that probably does sound weird. But it's a wardrobe without the lid. The lid. The door. And because the TV is quite big, so the, the, the wardrobe's on its side, the TV's resting on the wardrobe. And the space underneath, which is the wardrobe, is where I put his bowl. Pour his bowl of water. I've got some dry food, which is in a bag. And a few little bits and bobs, some of his toys and stuff. He couldn't be bothered to walk over there. He sat under the table and waited for me to bring the bowl to him. And put it underneath the table. Ah, <sighs> strange... Uh, although he has been a lot more he's, he's doing something he hasn't done for gas brilliant I had some Weetabix I don't know why I'm telling you that I just thought I'd share it I'd like to share my stomach's contents with you <laughs> if, if at all possible I can if I get a chance he started, this is a recent thing, he started laying down next to me. Instead of resting across where my legs are and maybe resting his chin on my ankle or whatever, he's now started cuddling up to me on the actual seat on the left of me. And the last few days, he started climbing onto my lap and resting on my right leg and kind of leaning on the armrest of the chair, of the sofa. It's just, I don't know, it's, it's amazing it's taken all this time, a year and five months... Pretty much, nearly. He is, yeah, it was uh, middle of December. Or, yeah. Middle of December, maybe the first week of December even. That I got him. That he lived, he's lived here since then. And he's now starting to be more affectionate. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't. It still doesn't cuddle up to me when we're in bed, unless I'm asleep. It's amazing the amount of times I wake up and my my hand is on his on his tummy, and or on his chest, and he's wrapped himself his arms around my my around my arm. It's like he doesn't do that when I'm awake. What he will do though is when I'm, when I face the wall. 
because I, I either face I've got the wall on the left hand side the double bed is against the wall and I always start sleeping I always, when I go to bed to start with I lay on my right side so I'm facing towards I guess towards the other wall which the bed isn't against or towards the door or whatever there's a little set of drawers that's kind of around the head level of the bed and that, that reaches towards the door the beginning of the door and the door pretty much goes to the wall so so I do I tend to I don't sleep on my back because I've got sleep apnea so I, I go to sleep on my right and quite often I'll kind of push my back against the wall to, to a degree just sort of to keep me so I don't you know end up going on my back and it's weird for some reason when I turn around and I face the wall and you know get comfortable that way he will lay down right pretty much in the middle of my back not on the back but like cut, like really push himself against my back almost like he's stopping me from rolling over I'm sure that's not the reason but he's well it could be I don't know I think maybe dogs are a lot more smarter than I think as humans I think we think we think we're we're the smartest animals on the planet and I'm I'm not sure if we are. I know I'm not. He's, he's clever. He's very devious, Vinny is. He's very devious. When he wants to go somewhere or do something, he tries to trick me to do it. I mean, even as much as last year... We were playing ball, so I had these balls. I guess you know what playing ball means, I guess. But you know the the plastic holders which has the ball in it, and you, you just you chuck the ball using the plastic flinger, or whatever it's called. And then he, he, run, he runs and chases the ball and all that stuff. So what he would do is... I chucked the ball, and every time I chucked it, I'd walk. When when it got to the end of our little session together, and I wanted to make my way home, I chucked the ball, and I'd start chucking it near the exit, so he'd pick it up, so he could pick it up and bring it to me. What he started doing. The closer I got to the exit, he started picking a ball up and then taking it further into the park and dropping it for me to pick up and chuck. Very devious, manipulating me so that I stayed in the park. And he did that many times. It's very, it's pretty clever. Hmm, what stats? You want to hear the stats? Okay, we'll quickly go through the stats. I want to give the stats. The reason why is because I, don't know, I want to see whether or not there's a chance of um, increasing my YouTube channel viewership. I'll go into that in a minute. But So yesterday I ended up on 8,979 plays. This is on... I still can't remember the name of it. Was it Hypnosis of Sleeping Deeply? Today so far, and it's uh, 20 past 6 in the evening, or in the afternoon, 8,634. So, I'm still kind of um, surprised at how many plays I'm getting for each day like just for the end of, you know for the new recordings that is because 
I mean, what, yesterday? Now, today so far, the 10-hour version of Pet Peeves, which was yesterday's recording, I, I, I record it the night before and I upload it, edit it and upload it the next morning, early in the morning. So, but this Pet Peeves, number 111, Let Me Boy to Sleep, 4th of May, 380 de- uh, plays, downloads, plays, whatever you want to call them. The 10 hour version before that, the day before, which would be Friday, Q&A Friday, 653. And the 10 hour, well in fact, blimey, the 5 hour version of the day before, the 8 hour version, the 10 hour version, (laughs) this would be Thursday, 70s TV, so that's 1,109, 806, and the 5 hour version was 915. I was like, Whoa. I was never getting these kind of figures before, up till recently, so thank you, whoever's listening. And let's have a look what the the downloads for the Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast is. That's the one that's specifically just for this podcast. Got a little bit of gas coming out. My stomach's making some weird sounds. I don't know what I've got today. Today, okay, yesterday was probably one of the best days I've ever had with the Let Me Boy to Sleep. 5,620 plays. Today, 2,615 so far. Um, Friday, 4,899. So Friday and Saturday, really good way more than um, I'd normally get I mean 2,600 at 6 o'clock so there's still another over five and a half, half hours left so who knows what it's going to be at the end of the day at the end of the day and quickly for YouTube I've made some changes made some changes on my YouTube channel and I've just, oh no, what the heck's going on here? Stop it. My laptop's playing up. I just wasn't even pressing buttons and it was doing stuff. Okay. Right. So, what I've done to my YouTube channel, there's a few things I've done, is I have changed the the header to the same header as my Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast I have deleted every recording that isn't part of the Let Me Boy to Sleep family what do you mean by family I mean, surely Let Me Boy to Sleep is Let Me Boy to Sleep and that's it no no there's there's you know you get sitcoms and then you get uh or even like TV shows, whatever, and you get like a a crossover or a, a, a spin-off show. Well, what I have is there's the Let Me Boy to Sleep, which is the, the main one. But there's also the Sleepy Boring Objects, which is pretty much exactly the same as the Let Me Boy to Sleep. Except I don't talk about my day. Uh, I, I I pick a subject or an object, and I try, not necessarily successfully, but I try to stick to the point. It's an, it's an arguable one, to be honest. It's a, uh, but. I do try and stick to the point. So if you've got any um if you've got any requests for a particular subject or object you'd like me to talk about, I can do a sleepy boring object recording. Okay. Um the other one is which I don't really do much of to be honest, but it's the ASMR Let Me Boy to Sleep. Which is basically just exactly the same as this, but me whispering I might 
start to do more. But at the moment, I'm really focusing on the the commitment to record one, at least one, let me boy to sleep every day. And it's a commitment. You might, I know it's, it's like, well, it's just an hour, but it's not. I mean, first of all, I don't know why, but my recordings seem to be getting longer. And if only the rest of <laughs> other things would do the same. So um, my recordings get longer. And the hour, the, the time it takes to actually make the recording is the smallest amount of time, really, compared to all the other things I do to get it kind of processed and edited and time-wise. I mean, it's not necessarily hard, but it's, you know, time-consuming and takes a little bit of concentration. So that part is, yeah, I kind of got myself in this routine, which I've talked about before, but the routine really much, really much, very much is make the recording in the evening or, you know, late afternoon doesn't have to be late afternoon but like yesterday I did it in the afternoon about three o'clock I think because there was boxing on I had to go to bed early for boxing which was early hours of the morning Sunday although to be fair I went to bed at 10 need really I, I did quite a fair bit of sleep during the day and I went to bed early I'd be, already been to had a sleep earlier on Needs to be up for one, but I didn't wake up till half three. So I woke up to see the last, the last half of the last fight before the main fight. So it was good timing, really, because that was the fight I wanted to watch. That was the the main one. It was uh, Canelo versus Mangui Hyman. His first name's Hyman. Um, Canelo made him very he pounded him and made him very Canelo pounded Hyman and made him very bloody he did he beat him He's and I was really hoping that Hyman would win because I'm a fan of both but the problem with Canelo is he keeps fighting people that I like which is annoying he's, he's fought so many people British fighters and beaten all of them all the British fighters he's fought he's beaten and it annoy- it's just it gets to the point where yeah because like I was a big big fan of uh, Callum Smith um, with loads of people that he's fought Liam Smith I think he fought as well um, Billy Joe Saunders, big fan of his. So I was, for a lot of Canelo's fights, I've hoped for the other person to win. And it's not that I believed that they would win, but I wanted them to win. The only time I was 100% certain that Canelo was going to get beaten was when he fought Bivol for the light heavyweight championship and he did get beaten on points I just had a feeling had a feeling bearing in mind I'd already seen him go up to light heavyweight previously and knock out the the light heavyweight champion a different light heavyweight champion so it wasn't like he, he went up to that weight never having done it and like well, it's, it's gone too far up he knocked out a knockout artist, someone that was one of the scariest light heavyweights at the time. Well, he was at the time. So he, in fact, he's the one that I do believe 
he beat Bernard Hopkins. I think he ended Bernard Bernard Hopkins's career. I do believe. Let me check this out. See, it's going to bug me if I don't check it out. Bernard Hopkins. Uh, we say Bernard in this country, but because I'm both a fan and kind of scared of him, I want to say his name correctly. That he would say it, and I think he would say it's Bernard. But everyone in this country knows it's Bernard. Okay, so Bernard Bernie, he he won a world title. Is the last world title he won. He was already the IBF light heavyweight title. He won the WBA super light light heavyweight title at aged forty nine and ninety four year uh, days. 49 years old and 94 days in his 65th fight and then he fought Sergei Kovalev Kovalev and he it went unanimous decision but he and he lost and it was for the W it was for the WBA light heavyweight title so it's to unify, which meant there'd only be one, the WBC would be the only one left to get. Anyway, he lost that fight. And then he had another fight. Uh, two years later, two years and one month later, when he was 51 years and 337 days, he lost to Joe Smith Jr., who then went on to win the... the uh, light heavyweight world championship as well blimey so it's I remember watching him fight Joe Calzaghe in 2008 and he lost the ring light heavyweight title so he's been blimey so he won he was the middleweight champion for absolutely years like years so he won the IBF middleweight title in 1990 no he didn't <laughs> he fought for the a vacant IBF middleweight title against Roy Jones in 1993 okay I guess you do have to maybe you have to be a boxing fan to know who Roy Jones Jr. is but even if you just know who he is, if you know boxing, just the minimal amount of boxing, and you know who Roy Jones Jr. is, and you said Roy Jones Jr. had a fight in 1993, you're going to know that Roy Jones Jr. won that fight. Nobody could touch him. In, 19, in the early 90s, he was um, the greatest boxer in the world like he was the top and some would argue he's potentially the greatest boxer of all time some would argue that Mayweather is the greatest boxer of all time but one thing that can't be argued is Muhammad Ali is the most famous boxer of all time and probably will remain so and arguably the greatest person boxer of all time in the sense of what he achieved outside the ring he caused a lot of uh, I don't know I think he I think he achieved a lot of good stuff outside of the ring inside of the ring well outside of the ring as well maybe when he's in his heyday he caused a lot of uh Mm. splits among society I think and but that was kind of part of his game and what he did but anyway as far as I mean yeah he won the world's heavyweight title three times Ali because 
I see clips. I see clips on TV and especially YouTube these days, and I can't really get a sense of how famous he was in his heyday when he was Cassius Clay in the 60s and then when he became he uh, became Muhammad Ali it, I can't really get my head around how famous he was because I don't think any other boxer has had that kind of fame that he had like worldwide and he's thinking he was Africa he was absolutely he was a superstar in Africa and they probably so billions of people loved him. Uh, some of the most famous boxers in America in this country will only be known maybe in the West. Muhammad Ali was known everywhere. Doesn't mean he's the greatest boxer that ever was, because that's an impossible task. I mean, there are there are fighters that, for example. Joe Calzaghe, he retired undefeated. So there's, a, there's an argument that he was the best. He retired undefeated. Uh, then you've got someone like Oscar De La Hoya. At his peak, no one could touch him. At his peak, he was the best in the world. The best boxer in the world. It was before my time, really, which is weird considering it wasn't really before my time, but just <laughs> just basically lied. I mean, he, he won his first world title in 1994, so it's definitely not before my time. The thing is, I never heard of him. Well, I have heard of him, but never... I don't remember any of his fights ever being shown on terrestrial television, ever. And because I didn't have Sky, it was... I didn't get to see and realise just how amazing he was. So... What's this interesting? Jeff Mayweather... Jeff Mayweather, is that professional <laughs> boxing personal life? Part of the boxing Mayweather. Two, his two brothers are former welterweight contenders, Floyd Mayweather Sr. and two division world champion, Roger Mayweather. Wow, and he, so Floyd Mayweather Jr. has a father and two uncles. His father, Floyd Way, Way Mever, Mayweather Sr., was, he competed and challenged for the world title, but he didn't win. I think he fought uh, Sugar Ray Leonard. I think he took him the distance as well, I think. But then two of his uncles, Roger and Floyd, no, Roger and Jeff, both world champions. Roger held two world titles, two division world title champion, and Mayweather Jr., five division champion. How weird is that? If you think about it, to be able to. Is there any other boxing family that's. I can only think of the Smith brothers. I mean, you've got Callum, Liam. Uh, world title, world champions. Um, I'm trying to think of any other families where there's multiple world champions in one family. There probably is, but I can't think of any. Can't think of any. Oh, the Charlo brothers, Charlo twins. But that's when well, that's an anomaly, isn't it? The twins. Then you have the Klitschko brothers that look like twins, but they're not. They're brothers. I think they were twins. And their parents lied to them because they look the same they just look they're so similar 
is it's ridiculous and one looks older than the other one it looked like twins but like at different times in their life standing next to each other <laughs> that makes no sense no sense anyway um i don't know why what was i talking about um oh yeah youtube so what i've done is i so i've got the let me bore you to sleep i've changed the youtube channel to you ready let me bore you to sleep i'm wondering if i should put my name in brackets for that but i'll just put let me bore you to sleep so it's all the let me bore you to sleep podcasts that i've done are on there or all the let me bore you to sleep videos i've done where i'm on actually you can see my face don't don't watch them ones and there are i think 70 81 videos altogether um it's not all them the, there's a few asmr let me bore you to sleep ones there's also not many but a few there's a few I don't know if there's I don't know if there are but I think there might be some sleep hypno re, re, uh, what are they called sleepy boring objects the other podcast I do is um Jason's bedtime story time I can hear the cheers as I say that out yay Jason's bedtime story time weird story time so I pretty much I haven't done I think I've done 30 of them or something so what I'm going to be doing every time I upload one of them recordings I will turn it into a video and put it onto YouTube and it'll be part of the let me boy to sleep family one, two, three, four, five. So that's everything, isn't it? So let me boy to sleep. ASMR, let me boy to sleep. Sleepy born objects. Jason's bedtime story time. So that's three. What's the other one? I can't even remember it. I can't remember the other one. Is there another one? Let me bore your pain away that's it now technically you say well it's that's but it is it is kind of it's the same it's the same as these recordings except i'm focusing on uh, helping people to relieve their chronic pain and i hope that in some ways everything i do helps with that anyway because sometimes by listening to a nice boring voice such as moi moi can change change how you feel you know you see you feel differently so looking at the stats here the stats are really really awful actually at the moment i've got 1187 subscribers that might go down now that I've deleted all the popular stuff. But that's still available on my podcasts and everything, you know. So, um, so really, in the last 48 hours, I've had 77 views. 77 views. Yesterday, Q&A Friday, had 16 views. Today's recording, Pet Peeves, from yesterday anyway, but it's, I uploaded it today, four views. So, they just, you know, I'm going to keep doing it, and uh, we'll just see, let's see what happens. I'll just do it every day, day in, day out, and then eventually, I mean... In all honesty, and I don't like to be honest, as you know, the videos where my face is on there, for some reason, gets more views. 
I can't quite work that one out if I'm honest but it's all right it doesn't matter show your time in your mind ASR slow in time that's weird what's this one 515 slow in time in your mind that needs to be deleted it's not supposed to be there delete the video slow in time in your mind right that's another 30 views gone so that's pretty much what i've done i'm trying to keep everything just to the let me boy to sleep and what to let me boy to sleep family here's a weird one okay right get this are you ready are you ready for this are you ready for this boom 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 right all time <laughs> oh okay so if i do the last 30 days last 30 days okay seven days oh okay right what was it called the a cinderella story Oh, I need to get rid of that. No music. Okay. 29 is Cinderella story. So if I just look that up. 29 a Cinderella story. So on the Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast, I had. Uh, you, oh, okay, that's weird. Right, I'll just give you an idea. It's 10 hours, 312 plays. And this was from the 12th of April, so it's about three weeks ago. 10 hours, why is that? Oh, 10 hours with music, 10 hours without music, 330. Maybe I need to start doing stuff without music as well. But on this Hypnosis of Sleeping Deeply, 10 hours is 951. YouTube, it's been on there since the 12th of April. No. Yeah, it's been on there so since the 12th of April. One view. one view are you ready for that one view why is this saying release and then published oh, don't know why so for some reason nobody wanted to listen or watch it nobody wanted to watch i don't understand oh well so a cinderella story jason's bedtime story time yeah go figure still trying to, I just don't understand how it all works after all these years still can't really figure it out so that's the YouTube channel so I'm gonna try and just stick to that I'm not gonna upload any of the old recordings of let me boy to sleep no I'm not because I like to do that I like to do oh this is gonna take me a month to do so I'm gonna do this now no, no. Or should I? I suppose I could. I could do that. But it's, I don't know. It just, it's a lot, isn't it? It's, it's like a thousand, thousands and over a thousand recordings to do. I mean, if I've got, looking at it, well, how many does I've got? All together, uh, my channel. So I've deleted one. So I've got eighty videos, and there's one thousand one hundred and eleven. Let me boy to sleep. That's a lot to upload. So I think I'm not going to bother with that. 
No, I think not. I think you think you're not not. So I will, yeah. So that that's it really. So let me broadly sleep on YouTube. Visit or no visit, tis your choice. Wonder how much. How much is Bernard Hopkins worth? Forty million. He was so good. He was a world champion. Oh yeah, that's what we're looking at. Got to go back. Sorry, Bernie, Bernie Hoppy, Bernie Hop Hop. I think he was called Hop Hop. He won the. Okay, so he lost against Roy Jones Jr. in 1993. He finally won the world title in 1994. No, he didn't. He drew. He finally won the world title in 1995. So two years later, against the same person he drew with previously, which was Segundo Macado. And then he retained it or defended it one uh, okay on it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen That was weird. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty to twenty-one. Twenty-one times. Oh no, twenty because he lost. Okay, so I'll get that. Start that again. So he he won it in. January 27th, 1996. No. 29th of January, 1995. Of April, 1995. So defended at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So defended it 20 times and then he lost twice to Jermaine Taylor. And then he went up to light heavyweight. And he won world, the IBO and ring light heavyweight championship in 2006. And then he lost that to Joe Calzaghe. And then he... He won the IBF light heavyweight championship in 2013. Wow, that's quite a long time, isn't it? Ooh. Anyway. I'm just saying he's really good. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Uh, and I think, I do believe, he defended the middleweight title more than anyone else has ever done. But I'll have to check that. Right. I know everyone's excited about this. Who made most defences... of middleweight title I think he I mean someone say it's Hagler obviously it's Marvin Hagler I think he wasn't I think it was oh no no it's Triple G Golovkin 21 he beat it he beat Hopkins by one I don't know though Okay. Was it 21 in a row though? They might think, that's a weird thing to say. Not really. Because he's won the world title more than once, you see. So let's have a look. Let's see if it was 21 titles in a row. Because that was what this was about. 21 in a row. So he won the world title... 
He won the middleweight title. Right. In 2010 August, so, and then he retained it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Ah, see? He retained it 19 times. There was a draw in between that as well when he fought Canelo. But then on his 20th defense, so you could say, okay, he won it. So he had 20 title fights, but he retained it 19 times. Hopkins retained it 20, 20 times. And then he lost his titles. And then he he won the IBF and the IBO world title middleweight again a couple of years later. Or a year later. Yeah, a year later. And he retained one, two, yeah, one, two, three. Retained that three times. Well, twice. And then he fought Canelo again, 2022. And he hasn't fought since, for some reason. I think he might have retired. Because, maybe. Uh, I wonder if he's retired. Because he's not fought for two years. Why, that would be unusual right so I don't know on June 14th 2023 Golovkin vac vac vacated his IBO world title and that was it um, he relinquished the WBA super title after being ordered to face um, the WBA regular champion so there's obviously some reasons behind that I don't know what they are so huh. okay I'm not sure why why was I talking about Golovkin yeah so that's oh the most title defences but I was talking about in a row in a row without defeat uh, so I think Hopkins wins that but I get so tired sometimes especially when I'm tired so I took the little one for a walk today I started doing this thing, right, where I count from 1 to 10. When I wanted to do something, so there's a new, the new thing I've been doing lately is closing the living room door so that he doesn't get distracted by all the sounds in the downstairs so he's not barking every time someone opens a door and things like that. And it seems to be working. I'm not a big fan of... I'd rather have the door open, but hey, it, I'm hoping it's a temporary thing, but I need to have him in here with me. That's kind of the whole point. Otherwise, I don't need the door closed. And I close it anyway when I make a recording. And quite often, he'll be in the bed. He likes to sleep on the bed. If he, if he, when he get when he can, even though he gets at least twelve hours sleep every night, twelve hours, twelve. Okay, maybe not always twelve hours, but today we were in bed at ten, and he was still in bed at ten. I think he rolled in at about ten thirty. He got up about uh, half three with me briefly so he was in there probably for about half an hour maybe an hour and then he went back to bed but he went to sleep during that time anyway in fact I don't even 
No, he didn't even. He was in here for just a little while, then he went back to bed. Yeah, he didn't didn't stay in here with me. So I got up, I went to bed with him, got up, watched the boxing, went back to bed, got up again. Well, I got up, you know, and I was and during that time I had my breakfast the first time, had my breakfast, did the editing for the recording for last night, worked on that until about six o'clock half five six so got all that stuff done went back to bed woke up about nine get up the headphones are unraveling on the bookcase they're just falling down on their own well, guess what i found yesterday right i got a, uh, I didn't know this is even possible. Do you know you see huts? You know you see movies and maybe TV shows and they go into the woods and they find a tin of beans or a tin of soup or a tin of some kind of tin of food and it's been there for a hundred years and they open it up and, you know, eat it. Or they're not sure whether they could eat it or not, but they, you know... They, they open up anyway I believed that that was a thing but it is a thing I saw it on a nature program okay let, let me let me inform you I opened my cupboard which is next to the cooker and there were there well there are still because I've not removed them one, two, three, four, five, six, about 10 to 12 tins or cans of soup. And they have basically leaked. They've leaked, they've exploded. I don't know how, There's, they've been there for so long probably a good two two years maybe even longer three years maybe I don't know two years and I thought they'd be fine and you might say well, that's because you got your cooker on every day I don't I rarely cook so I don't even use a cooker very often and which is the same as saying I rarely cook I don't know why I, I hardly ever use a cooker I mean it's just another way of saying the same thing isn't it why why very strange and I've got to clear them up and I've, I'm leaving it because I'm thinking as soon as I move one of those tins it's just going to go everywhere very strange I've never seen that I've never seen that before in my life I thought tins were supposed to last forever and they were in a clean cupboard it's not like the cupboard was mucky or rusty why would there be a rusty I don't know it's not full of like I don't know, rusty instruments or stuff. Like a rusty piano or a rusty um, thimble. Thimbles, is that a thing? You know, because something, I suppose, if you've got something rusty, it can, it can then get into the other metal and make that rusty, I suppose, if it's touching it. I don't know. Um, I mean, there's no rusty drums. It's not big enough for, it's not big enough for a drum kit. <laughs> there's no rusty flute um, you can get metal flutes can't you yeah I'm thinking of recorders never used to like recorders I'll tell you why because they used to collect spit and I think in junior school we used to share the recorders I think in high school they used to start like cleaning them you know like uh, disinfecting them the, the ends but in junior school I don't think they did that because back in the late 70s the society didn't know about germs didn't know about it 
See, and you might think, well, that's the most ridiculous thing in the world. That's absolutely ridiculous. Um, which is true, I was lying. However, do you know when germs were invented or created, discovered? Really, in about 18... 1890 I mean it's the discovery of germs it's it's kind of a mix because it says that it's the, I'm, I'm reading this okay so I don't think this is off the top of my head if it was off the top of my head it would not make sense the discovery of germs is attributed to several key figures throughout history oh excuse me I know one thing though it's, it's stuck with me. Do you know what people used to do before soap? Because they didn't know soap. Didn't know needed soap. And it wasn't that long ago. I mean, in, in our lifetime, of course, it's a long time ago. But in the, the, the history of, let's say, my country where I live, I mean, you might live in quite a quite a young country you might live in a really old country I live in a very old country technically we all live in the same age country technically we're all one country at one point weren't we one landmass. that's a continent well it wasn't called a continent when it was all one bit was it it was called an island uh, see when all the world was connected, which it was, all the land masses in one big land mass, however millions of years ago, I reckon it's probably a few thousand years ago, but hey, what do I know? Not much, obviously. So, I mean, you look at it, it's just like a, a jigsaw puzzle. But there's other other little countries that have been, it's all been created by um, volcanoes anyway, isn't it? That's what creates islands anyway, but... It's just, it's the most fertile land is uh, volcano land, apparently. Most fertile land there is. For some reason I'm staring at the wall when I said that. And I had this sense that I was being really profound. And then I realised that I probably wasn't. Huh. Never mind felt good for a second I want to allow myself do you, do you know right because dirt being dirty and being smelly was connected people figured and not just smelly but like anything to do with um, health or anything like that so they they connected it it was a smell so, if you change the smell, then you change it, you clean it. So, if you make it smell nice, it means it's clean. So, there was a time before soap was invented, or not before soap was invented, before soap was used, because soap was invented long before it was ever properly used. And there was a surgeon. I know that applies. It's really amazing. I amaze myself the stuff that I know. There was I won't go into details because it's not a pleasant story. But there was this Scottish surgeon who went and it's very famous but a very sad story. You could look it up yourself. I can't even bother to tell you it. <laughs> so I took Andre Andre, I took Vinny for a walk. Now I'll tell you about it. Okay, what happened is this. Apparently, he wasn't the most personable person. And he wasn't the most liked person. So when he he started looking, he went to a hospital ward and saw the difference between the men and the women. Women wash their hands. 
men didn't. They didn't see the need for it. Women were more cleansly, more clean, cleansly, if that's the right word. When I say women, I'm talking about the nurses um, in that ward. In, let's say so. There's it was um, basically a baby ward. So again, without going into details, they discovered that the. The, should we say, success rate of the, the, the success rate of why those wards were there was much higher, he discovered, much higher in the ward where they were washing their hands. So they weren't going between doing an operation and also operations as well. So there was this... Uh, in the old days, they'd do an operation and they'd go, no gloves or anything, they'd, they'd go and do another operation. So, you know, contamination, cross-contamination, whatever. They weren't washing their hands in between. But in another ward, they were washing their hands. Another surgical place. And he, he sort of realised, and the success rate, recovery rate was much, we'll say recovery rate, but you know, you know, was much higher in the one which used soap. I'm not explaining it very well, but I don't want to go into graphic details because that's not really why I'm here. Um, what other rusty insurance could have been in that cupboard? Rusty keyboard. Rusty xylophone. They're made of metal, weren't they? Hmm. Rusty Bugle. I saw a Rusty Bugle once. It was, it was quite weird. It's like it was in a second hand shop. And because I used to play the Bugle when I was a kid in the Sea Cadets. I, mean, I, still remember the, <laughs> I still remember the tune. Do, 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 do. I quite liked that bit of the tune because it meant that was the end of the ceremony and we could all go home and eat chocolate. Okay, that was what it should have sounded like when I was doing it. It's weird. I, just, I was all right. I feel I was okay. I was I was all right. And um, when I was in the sea cadets, I don't know if I ever told you this. I was so rubbish. I've been really, really incompetent at pretty much everything I've ever done I think and I was in the sea cadets for from the ages of 11 to about 13 and normally you can you get your first badge which is what's the first badge is it, is it private seaman it's all, it's all to do with, but I mean, it's all to do with, it's all something semen. So private semen, oh, I've got to check this one up. I know Abel, oh, Abel semen. Abel was like the top. Sea cadets, sea cadets. I wonder, wonder who the sea cadets, what is, get in touch, national impact, because they have, I think they have girls in the sea cadets now, I mean I'd have, I'd have still be in it, I'm just, not, that sounds weird, but you know what I mean, I'd, I'd have, if there'd been girls there I wouldn't have left. 
because being around boys was I didn't enjoy it the only reason I, I went there I went there with my friend Kevin not Kevin blimey Dean uh, originally we were all we were doing we were just walking the streets on a I don't know what night it was I still don't remember if it was a Wednesday and a Friday or a Monday and a Friday so we were just walking past there and there was this big drill hall as I'm getting nostalgic thinking about it now it's weird because I was a kid I was a little kid 11 um wow yeah it's uh I do actually have a picture of me in my sea cadet uniform but it's like an old fashioned picture so it's I don't there probably is a way of turning it into digital maybe I need to look into that but I don't know I wouldn't I don't have that ability here because I could use that as my image maybe I'll talk about the sea cadets in depth one day because I'm starting to remember things about it that fir- I remember that first night so we both went there and it was dark outside I think or it was light it was one of them and we were bored we were bored it was like run out of things to do we lived in this t- little town and there wasn't a huge amount to do at night and this was probably during the summer holidays because I wouldn't have been out probably at that age during the school time and that was before I was old enough to do a yeah I was old enough before I was able to do a part time job Otherwise, I would have. I don't know. It might not have been. Anyway, I I think you had to be 12 to do a part-time job in them days. You had to be 12 before you could have its, a paper round. Maybe it was 11. Maybe it was 13. Ooh. No, it's got to be before that because I, I, I worked for years before I left school. That's why I got burnt out so it's at such a young age. I'm trying to think. I'm finny. Why he's looking up so innocent? Stop doing that, mate. That's all right. I still love you. Whew. Can I open the window though? <laughs> if you need a, if you need a poo, just let me know. <laughs> yeah. squeaky chair so I we went in there and there was this basically there was this bridge like this little bridge well it wasn't a little but it's not a big bridge but there was a railway track that used to go through well, it was a bridge that went over a railway track it was a railway bridge I suppose I could have just said that but it was natural road and it led to a motorway actually if you kept going straight or if you turned left it led to well, it also led to a motorway but it's the round round way to it more through the countryside if you turned right it led to the town centre or to the motorway if you kept going because you have to turn right at the roundabout if you wanted to go to the town centre or if you turned left it led you to the motorway or if you turned right it led you towards the the a different part of the town like the end part of the town where the the there was other stuff I can't remember I think there was a golf course up there I went up that way a couple of times I went all the way up there once because yeah I went all the way with uh, with my friend because he lived the other side of the golf club so I cycled all the way there and I only visited him once and that was it 
I don't even remember what we did, but I know I got home late and I got in trouble. My mum still won't talk to me. <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah. Why was that funny? No, it's just because it was such a long time ago. She's just... She should get over it by now. That's why I was laughing at that. Not because... Well, I don't know. I don't know. So there's girls in the seek of this now. Blimey. I wouldn't have left. I would have stayed. I didn't want to be around boys. Especially in, in that at that age. I'll be honest. I mean, okay, my best friends were boys. But I preferred girls. When I was at school, it's just I went from being cute to not being seen at all. You know, so I was a cute kid, cute little kid. And then when I got to kind of acne age, so I don't know, 13, whatever, 12, 13, I've, I've, I was a late developer anyway. I'm still going through puberty. So when I was going through that, then I became, well, everyone else was already like men, pretty much physically men, not mentally men, obviously. Apparently, we never become mentally men. We're always little boys, according to uh, certain Facebook posts that I see. <laughs> Bless. It's caused a big divide, isn't it? That's the word I was trying to look for earlier. I was talking about Muhammad Ali. He divided people. Didn't necessarily bring people together all the time during his heyday. Even during his fights, he'd divide people like by being horrible to his opponents and stuff, but Fraser never forgave him. Never forgave him, you know. It's weird. So even though if it wasn't for Muhammad Ali, Fraser wouldn't have made the money he made. If he hadn't beaten Muhammad Ali and had they had two fights or was it three fights they had that was he's without being rude I don't want to be rude but Frazier wouldn't even be remembered I don't think if it wasn't for Muhammad Ali is why Frazier's remembered and um, And he's remembered not for being the world heavyweight champion, which he was previous to um, big George Foreman knocking him down about 50 times in their first fight, in their, their fight, fight they had. But he wouldn't, he wouldn't have been remembered in, in the history of boxing had not been for Ali. And I'm thinking probably if George Foreman hadn't made his comeback and re-won the world title he kind of and he hadn't been such fake he was famous wasn't he in America with the old George Foreman and Grills and that if he hadn't done that I think he would have probably would have been he'd have been in the same category as Ken Norton and uh, some of the other names that were big at the time but kind of just moved away not so much remembered you know and there's some, there were some great fires in the 80s I think and I saw this article the other day Tim Witherspoon was the underrated and I, I agree he was Tim Witherspoon was a really good heavyweight champion and also here's a controversial thing any boxing fans out there that think they're boxing fans but of course you can still be a boxing fan even if you think it I don't know what that means but I used to think that Trevor Burbick who Mike Tyson um, created he, he had chicken legs when Tyson hit him and people were mocking him and like oh he was he was just a paper, a paper champion. He wasn't a very good champion. He wasn't a very good fighter. It's not true. He was really good. 
In fact, he was known to be a bully. A lot of fighters were scared of him. And he took Larry Holmes the distance. And before their fight, they had a big punch up in a in a car uh, a parking lot or something. And there's film footage of I think I think it's Larry Holmes jumping off a car onto him. So Trevor Burbick was a serious, serious boxer and he did win the world title. But because he only had it for a short while before Mike Tyson came along, he lost it. But if Mike Tyson hadn't come along, Trevor Burbick may well have beaten everyone else that was around at the time. During that time, I think he'd have got beaten eventually by the likes of Lennox Lewis and he might have got beaten by Witherspoon I don't know Bone Crusher Smith I don't know I think they're all fairly kind of level but the Night Buster Douglas won providing if he hadn't got that long count if uh, Buster Douglas I think he'd have beaten anyone Anyone in history that night, that was his night. I don't think anyone would have beat Buster Douglas. In fact, going back, I don't know. I'll make it all up as I go along. I've got no idea. Don't know who any of these people are. So the Sea Cadets, we was there at this... I said it was like a, a bridge that went over a railway track on the left because you come out of my house where I used to live obviously I went back there but I went back there recently actually and uh, knocked on the door and I said uh, hello this, this lady came to the door very deep voice hello and I said uh, hi I've just come to see my room she said what I said I, I, said, I had a bag because I thought well I was going to stay in a hotel. This is a couple of years. This is hmm, two years ago, I think it was. And I was going to visit my dad. And I thought, well, instead of getting a hotel, I'll just stay in my old room where I used to live. I said, I just come to stay in my old room. He said, what? I said, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just coming in. And so I had my bag. He said, well, wait a minute, who are you? I said, I'm Jason, I used to, I used to live here. She said, what? I said, I've decided I'm going to move back in. I don't know if I will, but I'm going to stay for a few days just to see my dad and that. And, and she said, uh, wait, what, can I help you? I said, no, it's fine, I know where it is. I said, at the top of the stairs. So I'm, and she's like, no, wait a minute. You can't just come in here. This is my house. I said, no, I used to live here. <laughs> and I just said, what makes you think that you can just come in here? I said, I phoned. I phoned you. You're a bed and breakfast now. She said, oh, that J. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I thought you just some random person deciding that you could just come and live, come and move back into a house that you used to live in before. Well, I'm the owner now. You can't just come back. I said, no, no, I booked the room. Because you're bed and breakfast. He said, yeah. Because I, I thought, what a great opportunity to see my old room. And I, don't, I didn't know if I was going to get that room, to be honest with you. I saw pictures on the website and the rooms didn't look anything like they used to. But um, it was too good an opportunity. And it's weird because I think three... At least three of the houses that I lived in that little block, that little area that I lived, were bed and breakfasts. And a lot of the houses up that road were bed and breakfasts. Because it was just near the beach, really. Literally, you walk to the end of the road, and there is the... What do they call it? The cliffs. They call it the cliffs. But you could see down as a sea. It was probably a couple of hundred feet up or whatever. Um, and you could look down and just walk down the stairs, the steps. One of my greatest memories is jogging 
on an early in the morning before school and jogging around. This was when I was doing... I must have had my... See, that's the thing. I'm trying to remember. I must have been doing... What was I doing? Where was I getting my money from? Maybe it was the evening paper round. I was getting money from somewhere because I used to go jogging in the morning and I was doing karate at the time. I'm pretty sure I was. That's part of the training, I think. I was jogging. And I'd go down. Sometimes my little, my my big brother would go with me. And his, longs, his legs were about three times longer than mine. So he'd be right ahead and uh, I remember catching up with him and saying, look, I thought this was supposed to be a bonding experience. And he said, bonding experience? What are you talking about? I said, like, bonding experience? You know, like uh, self-help, bonding with each other. He said, that that's not even a, a well-known, it's not a well-known phase, phrase yet. He said, are you, are you sure you can say the word? Phase or phrase? He said, phrase. That doesn't really become a thing until the 90s, like bonding with someone. I said, well, yeah, but it's still a thing, though, isn't it? He said, yeah, it may be in America, more civilized places, but not in this country. And I said, OK, um, did you say America or more civilized places? I said, yeah, America and. Oh, OK, because don't be rude to I've got listeners in America. I said, no, I wasn't being rude to your, to your listeners. I said, good, because that's not on. I said, all right, blind me. What do you want to what do you want to bond over? I said, well, nothing, I just okay. If, how are you? How you <laughs> how how are you doing? He said, I'm running. And they said, What are you doing? I said, How are you doing? I said what do you mean? He said, Well, how you how have you been? He said, I live in the next room to you, Jason. i how I see you every day, unfortunately. How have I been? What would you mean? Well, just wondering if you're okay. Are you, are you, I don't know, what dreams do you have for the future? And he just ran off. So, never saw him again. He was a fast runner. Just see dust behind him. At first, I thought he'd uh, <laughs> he'd put um, <laughs> too much talcum powder down his down his underpants, and he was farting, but it wasn't. So there was a time. See, talcum powder used to be a thing. I'm talking like in the 80s, talcum powder, probably 70s as well. I put so much down my pants. It was, it was like, do you, do you ever see weightlifters in weightlifting contests, like during the Olympics or something, and they chalk their hands first, or even the the athletes, you know, when they, I know weightlifters are athletes as well. I'm just saying, the the ones that do those rings, you know, like little monkey. The monkey bars, are they called? No, because I used to have a little play monkey thing, which was in a... I used to press the bo a button at the bottom of it, and it would swing around these bars, or these little rings. So I guess, are they called monkey bars? But And they'd... Oh, there's the strength. Well, to be fair, both of those weightlifters and the strength is phenomenal. The point is, they use a lot of chalk. And it's like, really, that that's what it would be like. Their hands were like my, the insides of my underpants, which was a weird analogy. They're, it was just very chalky, that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of dust. And that's what I used to think. I was young, okay. I remember I was watching the Olympics. And I actually thought, because I didn't know any better, I didn't know any different... I thought that the the chalk that they were like rubbing into their hands was actually talcum powder. I thought they were making their hands smell nice. 
I didn't realise why they were doing it. I just thought maybe, maybe the the the, the you know the, the the power power weightlifters and they didn't like the smell of the bars, so they they put the talcum powder to make their hands nice and soft, so they <laughs> didn't get calluses or something. I don't know. I was young. I mean. 44 but I was still younger young I like that so I um, yeah blimey going to, it's weird though because you go out of the house where I used to live turn but basically it's, it's different ways you know when you've got lots of different roads kind of lead to the same thing it, it leads to different parts of the same road, rather. So the town centre was just down one road. But there is... I could get to it different ways. I could turn left, then turn right. I could just basically turn left a little bit and turn right. T turn left and go further on and turn right. Led to that road. Turn left from the house and just go further up and then turn right. And then I could go turn left and go all the way around and turn right but that would lead to the top of the hill which went down like I guess all hills that's the whole point of a hill isn't it it goes down or up but you can't have a hill that doesn't either go up or down or both I guess it has to be both doesn't it I feel I'm turning to Shakespeare a hill by any other name I don't know but I, I'm starting to think that these recordings are becoming silly. They used to be so sensible and so, so together, and so inspiring. Now I, I'm beginning to think that it's like I'm not taking myself seriously anymore, and mm, that makes me so angry. <laughs> Guess what? I've never been so angry. <laughs> so, mm, mm, sniff, sniff, lovely. I you go basically go down. It's just all the way down past. You go over the main the the town road and keep going down. What normally I would do is what I normally do. I turn right. Okay. Turn left, turn right out of the house, turn left, turn right again, turn left and go all the way down that road and that would lead me to the same road that was where my school was, my high school and literally just across the road from there it wasn't on the bridge it was just before the bridge and there was this big well it's yes yeah, it fairly big hall with big massive doors big enough for a horse and cart i think i think it used to be the fire the fire department so that's why it's so big like you know 100 years ago or 200 years ago or something and the they used to do drills and there was like a car park outside which was the drill area where they didn't actually do drills like with a drill but they used to call like marching and stuff like that drills and there'd be a drill sergeant again he didn't hold a drill it was i just want to just have that straight it's not really about drills it's called drill and it's still named the same way as a drill is called, D-R-I-L, but it's a different thing, because what the what like the drill sergeant, for example, he would stand in front of everyone and he would shout commands, right? And we would do a drill. So our what we would do is march. Uh, he's like, up, oh, turn right, 
or attention, stand at ease. And when we stood at ease, we'd put our hands behind our back. And I don't remember either, either because you, you, when you're at attention, you've got both your feet next to each other facing the front. Took me a while to learn that one. And when you stand at ease, you put one leg out. I think it's it's either the I think it's the right leg out from the right that it's the right leg out from the left leg. Only one leg <laughs> only one. <laughs> There's no hopping. It's it's one one leg moves, one stays. Um I can't remember which one it is, because it's a long time ago, man. So it's literally literally like 40 years ago blimey wow I do sometimes wish that I could be remembered for something <laughs> it's just like something other than just talking rubbish which is if I'm remembered at all for at least maybe a, a few weeks after I'm gone I'd like to be remembered for more than just talking rubbish, but hey, I don't know how that's gonna. I don't know. How, I don't know. How I'm gonna do that. Uh, so anyway, I was. So that what the drill was. So the drill sergeant would shout the commands, and he shouted. And the drill would be us marching, right, left, right, left. Uh, if we somebody's have rifles and maybe you bugles and drums you like we practice and whatever and that would be the drill okay as opposed to the electrical thing which you can like put holes into walls let's say if you're in a um a changing room and yeah you've got two changing rooms you've got the the two different sex changing rooms and and perhaps you you need to put a hole in the wall because you need to put something on the wall like a let's say you're in a male's changing room and you need to put a coat rack or something like that and you might need to use the drill to make a hole in the wall in order to put then put the screws put a screw in to, to screw it in onto the wall the, the coat rack or maybe to attach the uh, what are they called the cabinets the lockers things like that and um, sometimes accidentally the I remember because I used to do stuff like that and try and help out and I said how come the holes go all, all the way through the, the drill's gone all, all the way. <laughs> so I, I just, Vinny, Vinny made me laugh. Um, yeah, that that was a weird job. So it's like, how come it's gone all the way through? The, the drill's gone all, all the way through the, the, the wall. And I remember saying, well, it's just, I slipped. I slipped. And he said, well, okay, so you slipped. And you were put in what? What were you What were you doing? I said, I was putting a coat rack up. He said, well, why is the hole near the skirting board? Um, I misjudged it. You misjudged the coat rack well no also, I do, that's for shorter people a coat <laughs> a coat rack for shorter people why is that is that why it's only three foot off the ground um okay another question yeah first of all have I answered the questions that you that you asked are you satisfied with my answers and he said yeah I said, really? He said, yeah. I go, wow. Um, okay, so, yeah, so you've done that. He said, here's another question. Um, 
the walls are about 15 inches thick. That must have taken you hours to get through there. I said, hours, days more like. I could only do a little bit at a time. People just kept coming in here. I mean, that's when I realised. Maybe I needed to get a different job. No, I just like, Drills, that's okay. So, drills, drills, that's what I'm trying to explain what a drill is. A drill is very different from the drill that we did with the sea cadets because the, that involved marching, very different from drilling um, into a public toilet wall or I don't know, any, any wall, any wall it doesn't have to be a public, to, it's it could be any any bathroom it's, it's you know it's it's a wall it, it doesn't have to be a wall you can do it um wood you know between stalls no 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 it's, it could be anything this is a drill but the, the point is it's different from the drill that we did in the sea cadets because that would involve that would involve waving both our arms up not at the same time. Although that did look quite funny when I did it, to be honest. No, they laughed, but the the, the drill sergeant didn't find it funny. Because you're supposed to do left leg, right leg up. And then when the right leg goes forward, left arm up. Did I say left leg? No, left leg forward, right arm up to the same length. Like, is it parallel to your shoulder? And then the right leg forward, left leg up parallel to the shoulder like that so what I did is I would basically just put my arm up and down both together at the same time I thought it was funny and it did get a laugh it did and um, not as much of a laugh as pretending to be the drill sergeant it's weird though because everyone was laughing and everyone found it even funnier near the end and I realised that was when he was behind me I realised there was something poking in my back and it was his uh, little uh, truncheon which I don't think he should have had to be fair I just, they weren't allowed to use truncheons I mean it's I think he was he a bit power hungry to be honest he was a little man and very angry very angry which is weird because the bloke in charge had a big cuddly beard you know what I mean it's someone with big beard is cuddly um, turns out he wasn't supposed to be cuddly but you know I'm just saying he's, he's he, he was cuddly and he was really you know friendly but strict but nice one of the other leaders because he was the the person in charge one of the other leaders was my fr well yeah he was kind of my friend if my friend's dad so uh, he was fairly friendly to me still you know still strict because had to, everyone had to be strict for some reason even though we was little kids but hey and just trying to have fun but uh, yes yeah, okay <laughs> didn't quite get enough discipline at home brilliant so it's weird I prefer to go there and get shouted out by strangers <laughs> than be at home so and then there was this complete I don't know how to spell it, knob rocket I don't know what's the right word is he used to just shout for no reason really he used to get angry it's like why are you getting angry he said you stole my car it's like okay <laughs> fair enough I suppose that is a reason to get angry but just um, just little things like you know eating his sandwiches and things it's like it really anything seemed to just set him off set him fire to his wig it was just just little things he just used to I don't know and the, the, the more the more he got like that the more I kind of wanted to 
I don't know. It's, it's strange. The weird thing about it is the man in charge, because it was all males at that time, the, the, the female equivalent, I think, were called wrens. And that's W-R-E-N-S. In the same way as... See, my brother used to be in the Air Cadets. But in the same building that I was in, the Army Cadets were there. But we never saw them, because they were on a different night. Never saw them. And their office was upstairs. Never saw them. And there was a mess hut outside the back where I used to get sweets and cans of drink and stuff like that. And there was another hut out the back which was, I think, where it was quite a big one where we used to do training and like knot, knots and fire safety and things like that. So it, it kind of set me up for working in a chip shop I don't know anyone that thinks I'm de def defaming chip shops I'm not because I know it's thousands of people working in chip shops it's just um, I can't say I enjoyed the whole experience <laughs> if I'm honest um, but at the same time the boss here's a weird one Here's a weird one, right? Bernard Hopkins, arguably one of the greatest boxers, middleweight boxers of all time. You ready for this? He lost his first fight. He lost his first professional fight at 23 years and 270 days old. And then he went on to be like a superstar, kind of. He's he's still really well known. And here's another thing. Guess what? Um, a lot of people don't realise. Who we were talking about earlier? Hagler. 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 Marvin, why Marvin Hagler? There's lots of different Haglers apparently, didn't know that. Hagler. He. Before he won the world title and became the biggest star in boxing for a while, wasn't he? Marvin Hagler in the 80s. He lost twice. One in his 25th fight to Bobby Watts and one to Willie Monroe in his 26th fight. No, 27th fight and 29th fight. That's a lot of fights to have because nowadays you don't have to have 30 fights before you go and win a world title. But back then you did because the competition, well, there was less belts. There was no WBO, there was a WBA, WBC and IBF. And the ring, but people didn't generally didn't fight for the ring magazine. That was just like an add-on um, that the ring would give to those people they liked. So Willie Monroe, his son, Willie Monroe Jr., was... He did he become a world champion? So Marvin Hagler won. He literally, where did, did he? I'm sure there was a Willie Munro Jr. No, it's not mentioned in it. Okay, fair enough. No, Willie Munro Jr. Yeah, he won. He challenged twice. Okay, he challenged, but he didn't win a world title. Okay, so Marvin Hagler literally had 1975, 1973 to 
Blimey, 30 fights in four years, three years. Anyway, it took Marvin, Marvin Hagler one vacant 1979. Six years. No, it was a draw. So he didn't win it until 1980 against, I know he won it against Alan Minter. So I go into this uh, with my friend Dean. We go into this place and they were so nice to us. They said, yeah, you can just hang around and watch. And it's what we did. And we just, we knew people. We knew, we knew some of the kids. See, one of the benefits of going to these clubs and I found the same thing with the Sea Cadets is there was two high schools in my town and there was rivalry between the two to, to a degree, you know, and which is weird, a little town, but one of the schools was much bigger than the other one. I was in the smaller one, still had a lot of people, a lot of kids in it, but the other one was bigger. Both my older brothers went to the other one. So I went to Deeb and they went to Orwell. Hey, too much information there. So I got to not only meet other kids in different years of my school that I didn't know before. I got to kind of got to know other kids in my year that I didn't really know I also got to know other kids from the other school that I'd never met before and didn't know or some of them I might have been to school with in junior school previous when I was about 8 but you know a lot happens between 8 and 11 we forget people don't we I guess so and the same thing happened when I went to do karate it was at Orwell School, so it was at the other high school on a Tuesday and Thursday night, 7.30 to 9, I think it was. And I was there and got to know, again, there was no other kids in my year that were doing it. I went with my friend Stefan and he was going, he said, I'm going to the, to the, to karate he was a pretty much the toughest kid in the year anyway and he was an he was an adult and he was he was a really good bloke and i was friends with him from junior school i think so we oh i said can i come with you he said no i said why not he said i see enough of you at school i said what do you mean he said if you never noticed i never i never told you where i live you can hang around with Dean, but you're not hanging around me outside of school. I don't even want you to acknowledge me when we're... <laughs> that didn't happen. So he said, yeah, come along. So I did. I went with him. And we were sitting there. Part of the reason he was going is because his brother was already doing it. And what I was... So I was, we were sitting on... It was a, a gymnasium. And there was, you know, the benches, the gymnasium benches. I don't know if they still have them. So the, the floor was wooden and it was a big, nice big old area and stuff and the the benches were long, wooden and quite low down and they were all stacked up at the side of the, the room. So we were sitting on them. My friend was about six foot two and I was about four foot three and he sat on the floor and I sat on the top right he was still taller than me it's not fair so we're watching it his brother who I didn't really know I'd met him because I'd been around my friend's house a couple of times he didn't didn't really hang out much outside of school to be honest but he, he was probably one of the few people I actually respected just I don't know I just liked him he was, and we used to have a laugh and he his brother was really cool as well like really, I got on really well with his brother. I I, ne I didn't know him back then, but then once I started doing karate, I became friends with him, and he was in a year below me. What was weird is there was Clive, who was 
pretty much like one of the toughest kids in the in the whole school. He he started first year and he was like a bodybuilder already. A deep voice and just that's my memory of it. He might not. He was strong, really strong, and he he kind of had a reputation and everything and I got on the right of him but I wasn't friends friend I was friendly because I didn't want him to beat me up no um he, he was all right but he was doing karate so I'd known him obviously seen him since the first year he might have been at my junior school but I never know, knew him it was there. I didn't know him when, when I was there and he was at the same I mean he'd only just started doing karate with my friend's brother and it was weird seeing him like that because he was he just had some trainers on and trousers or you know I don't know shorts and he he was learning the moves so he was a beginner just like a lot of other people and uh, and he he didn't stay. He, he, in fact, I, I don't think he was there when I started. The next week he was gone, and so I don't know why. But it wasn't for him. I think he was more of a boxer, to be honest. I think he preferred that, and that was more his style. But my brother's friend stayed. My brother, my friend's brother, was there. My friend came along, and we we used to practice at break times kicking and punching and all that stuff you know and and then he left which is a shame because he used to enjoy doing that and it was in uh, I don't know how long he was there for he was probably there for a good few months it might be longer but then my friend left I don't recall why something to do with needing a break from me or something I don't know he was seeing me too much I was <laughs> bit rude but his brother stayed so I, you know I, was, I got on really well with his brother still friends with him as well because I saw him at school and he allowed me to see him one hour a week <laughs> he's, he's like okay I'll talk to you for an hour I'll sit with you during this lesson so I just remember that that was a very similar experience so when I went to the Sea Cadets for the first time, the whole watching, does that make sense? Like watching a new environment, not knowing really what's going on, but the excitement of something new and being kind of a little bit scared really, I guess like unsure whether or not this is something I want to do and and it was the same with the karate, but with the karate, I knew I wanted to do that more than anything in the world. I wanted to do that. So I'm very grateful for my friend Stefan for, for taking me because, I don't know, back in them days, there was no internet. There was no, like, it was hard to really know what was going on unless someone told you about something that was going on. And no one in my year went to karate one one did judo but I was I kind of wish I had done judo as well but because it was on the different days judo was the other days so karate was on a Wednesday and a Thursday judo was on I think a Monday and a Wednesday so I kind of wish I'd done both and it was in this I'm not sure if it was in the same gym or judo might have been at my my school but I was a bit concerned because I was so light that and I know judo isn't a well they say it's not about weight but when they do competition they do it by weight so weight must have something to do with it otherwise they'd let a heavyweight go in with a, a featherweight so weight does have bearing do you know what I mean in it eh? 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 so I guess I was because 
previous I, I didn't want to be put in with someone that was like a lot younger than me and because they were the same size as me and I was little I was little I'd be, I'm not going to lie about it I was I was I was short but I was also I probably back in them days couldn't have been more than about seven stone when I was about 13 probably I left school I was eight and a half stone when I was 15 uh, couldn't put weight on for anything. I, I'd eat and eat and eat and eat and nothing. I'd just get through more toilet roll. That's just all it was. So I wasn't eating the toilet roll. Oh. You people. <laughs> what do you mean us people? So that's it really. I'm pretty much done. Done, da, da, done, 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 done. I might have an early night to be honest with you. Might have an early night. How long have I done? Oh, wow. Oh. Another long one. Oh, wow. So I'm going to go. So thank you. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. I just realized Vinny hasn't barked once, has he? The whole whole way through this. I feel I've only had to clap my hands a couple of times. I think one knows is because I think I coughed or something or I don't know. Can't remember. I'm not sure. Did I clap my hands when he farted? When he farted? I don't know. Anyway, thank you for listening. Lots of love. And I will be back tomorrow. Bye.